So of course we can change the text that way. All right, pretty sweet. Now if we hop over to the source code view, then let's go ahead and change the text on the button through here. So of course right now it just says new button. That's the default. Let's go ahead and change this to, for some reason, I don't like when the button text is the same as the title text. So I'm going to change this to log in. All right, sweet. So the title says sign in and this says log in. Now another thing that's kind of annoying me is I hate when there's not enough space for the user to actually type in their information and these little edit text areas or inputs if you call them if you're a web designer they're kind of um, you know kind of look bunched not enough room there so what I'm gonna do is in this first one I'm gonna add a new attribute and the attribute to actually just make this a little bit wider is Android in D R O I D and it's width. Now I'll talk to you guys about um you see that whenever you're alright, I probably should mention this. So when if you're a web designer, you probably use um either pixels or percentage or EM if you work with text a lot. However, whenever you're making apps, you're gonna use these special things called DP, and those are device pixels. And I'll talk to you guys about the different units of measurement right now, but just so you guys have a real basic understanding. If you had a phone that was high def, for example, so it was 1920 by 1080 or even 1280 by 720, that just means how many pixels are on there. You could have um, a computer screen or a TV that's 1280 by 720, or you could have a little phone that's 1280 by 720. So if you try to work with pixels, you really don't know how big a pixel is because the size of a pixel changes from device to device. So if you use these DP, they give you a little bit more control. And again, that's just uh, why we use DP for right now. I'll talk uh, more about that later. Later, it's gonna make a lot more sense. But for right now, I wanna change this to something like 320 DP wide because I know that that is a good width right there and I actually want to do the same for this right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that scroll down and paste that into so now both of these things are 320 wide looking pretty sweet so let's hop back over in designer and alright I mean this interface is looking beautiful right now however there's one other little thing that I want to point out. So select the top text view widget, the sign in title, and whenever you select it, you're going to notice that there is a light bulb on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and click this and find out what's this about. Okay. Hard coded string. Okay. So it's giving us a little warning message. And what this warning message is saying is what you should do is instead of just writing a string in there like we just did, you should treat this as a resource. So let me first show you guys how to treat this as a resource and then I'm going to tell you exactly why. So make sure again you select your widget, click the light bulb, now click the little right arrow next to here and choose ex extract string resource. It's kind of hard to say. So right here what we're pretty much doing is I don't want to say that this is a variable because it's technically a resource but if you never um, worked with like XML before or resources or you never developed for Android before, you're probably not really familiar with this. What we pretty much need to do is give a nickname to this string. So I'm just going to name it something like sign in title and then that's it. Click OK. Now as you can see, what's going to happen is instead of sign in title like we had, it's changes to this weird at string sign in title thing. So let's hop over in the source code and look what's going on. So of course it changed back to sign in as it should but if we look at the text now we still have a reference to the resource instead of the string itself. So what exactly is happening? Well to understand what we need to do is we actually need to open a new file and this file is under app, just like before, RES, this actually stands for resource. Now under values, you're gonna have a file called strings.xml. 
now. All right, let me adjust my seat because I'll uh, <laughs> explain this. So the reason that we needed to make this a resource is because we're pretty much saying put all of the strings in one place in one file and then I'm just going to reference them through XML. So again, whenever we reference a string, it's going to look in this file, it's going to look for that resource name, and this one was sign in title, and then it's going to say, okay, that was actually equal to sign in. So that's the value of this. Now, if we did something like sign in with exclamation mark, we can just switch over, and that would change, no problem. So again what we're doing is we're pretty much putting a placeholder right here and it references something else now you were wondering okay well what was the problem with just writing sign in in my source code right here why did it give me a hard time well the reason that it wants all of your strings in one place it's because if you ever do something like you want to translate your app to Spanish well what you can do is you can actually just say okay you don't have to look around your entire app and say okay okay this is a string now this is a string now I have to go to a hundred other um activities and find all of those no you just look at one file it has all the strings for your entire app and you just translate it right there and there's a bunch of other useful things too but pretty much it makes your apps life a whole lot easier when all the strings are organized in one file so that's why we did that and also since this is a string as well it's probably a good idea to do it to this so again select your button click the light bulb right arrow extract string resource and for this I'll just call it something like um, I don't know like sign in button text and choose OK and of course if we can see on our button instead of that text we have a reference to it but of course whenever we're running our app they don't see this weird reference symbol and again anytime you see an at sign that means that this isn't a hard-coded string this is actually a reference to something else so again that's what's going on right there now one other thing I want to point out is this so we're going to be referencing a bunch of stuff and we know why that's useful right now and actually go into your strings.xml file and close this out because typically we're not going to have that open however what if you wanted to change the text to this well you can go back in the folder go all the way find that file again but that takes a lot of time so instead what you can do is in the source code that xml select or excuse me press down control on your keyboard and you see whenever you do this then you can actually hover over these references now click and whenever you click it it opens up that file again so pretty sweet again you I don't know maybe you want to change that sign in to I don't know maybe you want to get rid of that symbol at the end again hold down control and this actually works for any reference but what we want to do is click that the file opens again and that line of code is actually highlighted so now I can close that and boom check it out so those are some really cool tips and now you guys know how to manually add activities and you guys also know how to add strings as a reference so um yeah that's pretty much it for this tutorial now one other thing I want to mention before I let you guys go is this so right now we're making something called a static layout it's a layout that's not gonna change um you know we don't want to make a, like a, a sign in form where the buttons like floating around and the user has to click at the sign in I mean if you're making a game that would be great but uh, for right now we always want everything to be in the same place however there are gonna be some layouts um maybe like the stream if you're reading like a bunch of posts that actually change so of course that feed goes up and down as you scroll with your thumb and also with games you know maybe there's like a bird flying around that you have to click or maybe you have to like make tanks that are moving around well whenever you need a layout that's interactive like games then we're gonna need to do something special and 
what we actually do is instead of using this, the designer in the XML, we're going to be making our layout in Java. It's going to be pretty sweet, but also pretty easy to understand. So uh, yeah, I'm pumped up. That's what I'm going to be teaching you guys in the next tutorial, how to make interactive layouts. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will smell you later.